Hello, and thank you for tuning in to Tech Talk Tuesday. My name is Brian, and I am the owner of Veranda Technologies. We're here in Brick Township, and we've serviced Monmouth, Ocean, and the surrounding counties. So uh, the end of the year is approaching quickly, so we thought we would uh, dive in a little bit on a topic that uh, should be addressed at least yearly, and most companies we find ignore it altogether. Uh, either ignore it, never get around to it, brush it under the carpet, don't think it's important, whatever the case may be. Uh, and what we're talking about are having written IT policies, uh, things like acceptable use policies, password policies. Uh, so we created a little slideshow and let's dive right in uh, to our workplace IT policies that we think all companies should consider. Um, you need written policies. Written policies outline the expected behaviors uh, for office technology, email use, phone use, voicemail use, uh, password security, vendor security. And if you don't have written policies, uh, you don't have any standards to hang your hat on or reference when sticky situations arise. You know, it's the, well, you never told me I couldn't download, download pornography on my work computer. Y you need to have it documented that you can't. Um, and you know, that's an extreme, but there are things that people might think are appropriate to look at that somebody else might think are inappropriate to look at. And when you're in a workplace, uh, it's very easy for somebody to glance over your shoulder and be offended by something. Uh, so uh, there's also, aside from the HR ramifications, there are legal ramifications that could come up uh, because of certain types of use. So, you know, not protecting client credit cards, for example. Uh, so every office should have an acceptable use policy, period, end of story. Whether you think you should or not, you should. And it should be written and it should outline acceptable use for computers, phones, uh, fax machines, internet, email, um, voicemail. Because it's important for your employees to know uh, what is expected and required of them when using the technology that you're giving them. Uh, it's also important for the business owner to understand the lost uh, potential loss of time, uh, loss of productivity, uh, because of things like this, right? You should have a written uh, wireless password security policy. So if you don't have wireless in your office, obviously you can ignore this. If you don't have wireless in your office and want wireless in your office, you should talk to us. Uh, but if you have wireless, do you have a guest network and a regular network or just a regular network? If you don't have a guest network, who do you provide your wireless password to? Who's allowed to have it? Vendors, contractors, uh, you know, guests to your facility. If you have, uh, let's say you're a hair salon, a restaurant, a doctor's office, someplace with a waiting room, obviously you're going to want to provide wireless to your guests. That should be a guest network that is isolated from your regular network. But more than that, whether you have that or not, it should be documented. Your staff should know who should get it, how often that password should be rotated, um, you know, changed so that the thousands of people that have it no longer have it. So you should have a written wireless password security policy. You should also have a bring your own device policy. And what that means basically is are employees allowed to use their equipment, their phones, their tablets, their laptops on your network? And are they allowed to put corporate data, uh, personal email accounts, you know, uh, business email accounts rather, on their personal devices? Can they put personal email accounts on the business devices? Are you going to provide business devices only and say that they can't bring their personal devices or do they have to, uh, like my wife, has two devices. She's allowed to use her work phone uh, outside of work but not put anything personal on it and she's allowed to bring her personal phone to the office and put it on wireless as long as no corporate data goes on it. So what's your policy on, uh, you know, portable devices? Remote access policy. Are your employees allowed to access re uh, work remotely? Are they allowed to, um, you know, what are they allowed to access? What devices are they allowed to access from? 
they can access from home, but will you allow them to access from a coffee shop network, a library network? Uh, those need to be documented because if you give your employee access to remote in from their personal laptop or a work laptop from home and they go to a hotel and the hotel has, you know, different security, somebody can get into your network through that person's device. So you need a remote access policy, particularly if you deal with sensitive information. Uh, vendor access policy. What vendors are allowed to access what content and how from which devices. And your staff need to know that because I'm a vendor, right? I can call my clients and say, hey, so-and-so told me to uh, hop onto the server and grab some information that they need because they're traveling. If that's not true and the staff don't know that that's never going to be allowed, that's a potentially pretty large vulnerability. Uh, even more so if the staff don't know who your vendors are. They should know who they're allowed to give information to, what kind of information, or who to contact to find out if it's acceptable to give them the information. Your staff should be um, trained on security awareness, but that should also be documented. What antivirus software is allowed on the machines? What so antivirus software is not allowed on the machines? So, uh, you know, that's important to document. <coughs> Excuse me. The data security practices. So this uh, comes into play a lot if you have uh, credit cards, social security numbers, addresses, phone numbers, uh, personal information for your clients. How is that data kept secure? Who's allowed, again, who's allowed to access it? Who's not allowed to access it? You need policies written so that, you know, there's a clear expectation of um, what's expected. Same with media destruction and retention. If you have uh, drives, you know, personal drives, thumb drives, uh, anything like that that an employee would take. What happens if a laptop is lost? What happens if, um, you know, something gets, uh, you know, misplaced? Who needs to be notified? What information was on it? And how to handle those incidents? Who needs to be notified, right? Sometimes it's just the owner of the company. Sometimes it's, uh, you know, uh, uh, if you're dealing with sensitive financial information, you know, there could be somebody in an outside company that you need to notify. Um, you know, medical records obviously would have their own, uh, that's a, a world unto itself. And then uh, software download and installation policies. Are employees allowed to download software? Are their computers restricted? Uh, you know, what can they download? What's acceptable to download? What's not acceptable to download? So you need um, all of these things documented. Uh, again, not every company needs all of these documented, but you need to consider whether or not you need them documented because if, if they come into play even a little tiny bit um, and something isn't handled properly and there are legal ramifications, HR ramifications, just personnel ramifications inside the company, uh, you as a business owner are not protected if these things weren't documented and the, uh, your staff aren't aware of what's expected of them. It is a lot to think about. I understand fully why most businesses uh, and business owners ignore this type of thing. I get it. It really needs to be paid attention to. We can help. It's overwhelming, but there are uh, templates in place that you can um, use as a starting point. Uh, most of them actually will take you all the way you know, through to completion with very minimal effort on your part. Um, there are, uh, you know, again, templates that, you know, cookie cutter kind of um, policies that you can start with and then expand upon over time. But um, you need to think about it. If you need help with it, please talk to us. You can always reach us at 732-743-5772. You can find us online at verandatech.com facebook.com slash verandatech uh, or email us at any time at helpdesk at verandatech.com. Have a wonderful week and we will see you next time on Tech Talk Tuesday.